uh, today. So we're still busy with uh, Unit 4, um, Procurement Project Implementation and Closeout. So Unit 4 actually is more about um, Stage 4 really than Stage 5 and 6. So, But it influences Stages 5 and 6 in, a, in such a big manner. That's why um, I included it in here. Um, so Unit 4, we're going to look at Chapter uh, four of the green book so we're looking at chapter four in the green book um, it's all about specification so uh, we've looked at the bills of quantities in the previous chapter and specifications um, goes hand in hand with any bills of quantities it basically is a supplement to the quantities and the descriptions in your bills of quantities in so far as describing how um, the items are actually put together and priced so um, usually your specification together with your drawings and your bills of quantities uh, and even photos um, are usually used uh, when pricing a document or putting a tender document together it's all items to assist uh, the contractor in understanding how things work um, so a good specification uh, always adheres to certain standard rules so to get into specifications, this is on page 27 of your green book. It is a comprehensive um, and a detailed description of the type and quality of materials and workshop uh, workmanship. Communication tool is a communication tool between the two parties, the client and the contractor, between the project team and the contractor, the QS, the architect and everything all the uh, professionals on the team communicating what they want um, actually be to be built so the contractor makes it a reality um, and whereas the professional team conveys the message to the contractor okay so supplements the architect or engineers drawings and providing info which cannot be shown on the drawings itself specifications can pre be presented as annotations uh, on drawings um, supplement uh, supplementary notes and items this um, descriptions in the boqs separate uh, it can be a separate document document so here it's nicely summarized what a specification is it's a combination of all of these uh, and something which is not mentioned but what you can use in practice is photos as well i've used that quite a lot especially with refurbishment work where um, you can't really describe how, um, for instance, if you need to fix cracks, it's nice to have a um, set of photos that can be linked to an item in the BOQ uh, because then the contractor exactly knows of which crack, for instance, you're talking about. So that might help. Okay, the purpose of the specification, as mentioned before, it's a communication tool. It is used by clients, the contractor, uh, QSs, clerk of works, uh, construction managers, etc. Basically, everyone on the project uses specifications uh, whenever conveying a message. Good specif uh, specification compiler is knowledge of the material. Okay, someone who puts a specification together will have a good knowledge of the material, building methods, and specification project requirements awareness of the local conditions um, only when drawings are not appropriate okay drawings is the biggest uh, method of communicating um, information to the contractor um, that old saying of a picture speaks a thousand words is truly applicable here general um, information is usually given first and then the detail so that it can be categorized very easily so if you're talking about excavations you would know that general excavations should be of this nature um, and then you can specify if it is a uh, difficult excavations excavation by hand is it excavation by machinery and so forth so descriptions of work uh, working methods and order should be avoided 
um, oh, prescription, sorry, prescription of working methods and orders should be avoided. The main thing is here is um, as a um, QS or as an engineer or as an architect, you have an idea of how it should be constructed, but you shouldn't take um, that away from the contractor. Otherwise, you're making yourself um, liable firstly for how it's implemented and also the contractor is the professional in the sense of he knows how to make it physically possible okay cross-referencing should be avoided and this is um, especially in our computer um, age it's very um, it's a thing that crops up quite often um, you will see whenever you're doing duplication of certain sections in a drawing um, the um, it does pop up quite a lot with that you maybe forget that you forget a construction line or um, the lines um, may have the, a different font setting etc etc especially if you're working from old drawings to new drawings and the line settings isn't exactly the same I've encountered that quite a bit um, which makes it difficult to measure for instance on a measurement pro uh, program and then it doesn't recognize the lines as the, as the same so for instance it might recognize a line as a brick um, brick wall instead of maybe a furniture setting or a uh, fitting or something like that clear referencing should um, sh uh, clear ref referring should, uh, should existing standards and codes. Um, I presume this is um, clear referencing, pardon for this uh, spelling, should um, existing standards and codes. Um, referring to existing codes should be, um, is very important. Then standardization is uh, preferable, but not always possible. Okay, so you want to try and keep it as simple as possible and standardized as possible. Then it gives everyone the opportunity to compare apples with apples. Certain phrases uh, phrases should be uh, awarded, uh, avoided. Okay, and then we'll get into these phrases um, now. Then we get to, to definitions. Okay, this is very important that you go through these um, definitions. This is very important for me uh, that you know the differences between this. Is you've got your specification of documents, okay? Then you have your general specifications. So your specification documents usually comprise of different sets of um, specifications. So for instance, um, the architect might have a, a specific set of specifications, for instance, drawings, finishing schedules, etc. Uh, whereas the engineers might have very specific um, documentation on, for instance, how uh, concrete is tested uh, and what um, justifies a concrete test. Um, should it be tested on seven days, 21 days? What is a set of concrete test cubes? Is it only one test cube done or is it a set of three cubes done? Whereas one is on tested usually on seven days, the other one on 21 days, and then a third one is left for if they uh, as a supplementary test if any of the first two fails. Okay, then you've got your um, project specification. Oh, sorry, um, general spe specification. Your general specification is usually, um, it describes the project as a whole it's located for instance in Bloemfontein it's got um, it's located in Langenhofen Park for instance where uh, you have prevailing clay conditions where in comparison to maybe um, Universitas Riff where you have very um, um, like a um, scale type of or hard uh, type of excavations where it's not really um, clay type of material but it's hard harder material to excavate and thus also you do not have to have um, that much in material imported whenever you're doing um, foundations okay uh, it specifies for instance the project should be from this date to this date um, this is more or less the general description of the project etc then you've got your project specification uh, going into more of the detail 
of the project. It is a one or one story house of this um, this size um, with medium type finishes or it's a very difficult build where you would need a crane for instance if you um, we had a project in the glass palace where we added a ninth floor um, on top of the eighth floor and a third floor on top of the second floor um, then you would describe that in your project specification that um, health and safety would be very important uh, so it's very specific items that the contractor should price then your particular specification your particular specifications is uh, for instance um, what type of brick should be used the brick should be at least a 7 MPa um, compression strength uh, it should be made out of this fines um, it should be uh, this ha it should have this type of moisture content etc etc then you've got your performance specification uh, where um, you specify that the contractor should um, conduct a health and safety audit uh, once a month a um, site meeting will be held every month and uh, um, a technical meeting would have um, would be two weeks from that um, site meeting etc etc in performance um, this uh, target date should be met by this date this piece or this target date should be met by this date the quality should be of this nature uh, whenever the project uh, reaches practical completion it should be uh, lockable and usable and people should be able to occupy it should be it should be fit for purpose that type of um, specifications then prescription um, specifications uh, where you would prescribe the contract to work maybe at night because during the day it's occupied by tenants and um, they do not want to be disturbed so you would have uh, specific uh, prescriptions um, only this access gate may be used uh, during the construction process etc etc and then descriptive um, specification descriptive quantification uh, specifications uh, will just be supplementary items describing how um, a specific item is fit together if you've got a lot of detail um, or specialist in a specialist installation like for instance a mechanical installation um, then that um, design team will have a description um, quantif uh, specification of how that item should be fitted together and um, how it uh, they would make uh, a basically a description of what the contractor should um, should d design for and quote for okay so um, you will see all these uh, specifications on and descriptions on page 28 and 29 so it's very important that you guys go through that and the, the, like i said this is a very important um, section for me okay so this brings us to uh, the diff um, prescriptive versus performance um, uh, specifications prescriptive requ uh, requirements usually spells out exactly um, how something is to be done whilst performance requirements just gives an outline of what the general requirements um, and the level of performance is and it really leaves um, a, a lot towards the designer or uh, of for instance a design and build to do a specific um, design and installation it should perform for instance you would have a prescriptive um, uh, specification uh, stating that this specific unit should uh, provide um, this amount of energy for instance if you look at the solar installation it should provide this amount of kilowatt output per day um, and it should have a storage capacity of x amount with a lifespan of for instance uh, 10 to 15 years um, and um, that would be a uh, performance requirement whereas prescriptive um, requirements would uh, spell out more um, it should be this make uh, of uh, solar panels it should be 
um, at least towards the uh, should have this uh, performance um, and it should um, it's it's very much more specific to the installation so your prescriptive requirements uh, specifies much more like for instance it should be this size of solar panel um, this amount um, fitted onto this brackets this type of cable should be used etc 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 where you have performance requirements uh, just prescribes what type of performance is needed so that's more or less the difference between um, prescriptive and performance type of specifications okay and then we come to specification systems specification systems are generally items commonly used on projects and endeavor to shorten the descriptions or specifications used so it's basically a standard set of specifications or a system that's used um, over and over on each one project to another and it's improved as it go as you go along um, well-written construction uh, project specifications are okay so this is uh, very important it should be compatible to f uh, with the form of contract it should be clear-cut and for who what the responsibility is internal consistency both technical and contractually consistency is very important capacity to support the preparation of balanced tenders for the work uh, to be before performed okay it should be doable clear integration and coordination of structural elements uh, with the um, uh, installation services this might not it's not limited to only structural items if you think about a plumbing installation for instance um, you cannot um, prescribe say polycop uh, pipe work uh, if uh, you prescribe other type of types of fittings uh, which that pipe work doesn't necessarily work as well with um, so for instance you need to be coordinated within your specifications the one system should work with the other system in short okay then um, we get to the overview of development and specification systems in south africa okay so in south africa we've got our standard system of measurement building works and the qs um, it's, it specifies that the qs should provide clear descriptions in the boq when the the um, when there is specific special materials required they are provided in either the supplementary documentation or as supplementary preambles or in the description of the actual bill of quantities the main thing is um, the contractor shouldn't be able to come back and say but look I didn't know how to price this I priced for this instead of this that, that's the main thing that you want to prevent then you've got your model preambles please note in the book it still refers to the 2008 one and then the recent um, architectural one that was issued um, in 2015 um, this has actually now been replaced by the 2016 asaqs um, model preambles um, that's being used but it's basically a general standard specifications that's used um, to support any bills of quantities or um, any drawings uh, developed by um, architects it just specifies if for instance uh, you do not specify what type what type of um, mortar is to be used in a brick wall um, it will be deemed to be a class 2 type of mortar so just it just sets as general standard then anything additional to that um, will be spe um, specified in the boq or um, supplementary preambles as shown in the previous uh, lecture um, in your boqs then you've got your sans regulations the sab standards i'm not going going to go into that what usually happens the model preambles uh, refers to specific um, to specific um, regulations in the SABS and um, so uh, the two goes hand in hand your SANS regulations is basically um, your most important specifications that you've got uh, for instance how um, items are um, to be built um, how excavation should be done how long should curing take place and so forth then you've got your commercial uh, specification systems these systems are usually ad hoc specifications um, developed by specific um, clients 
um, consultants, etc. Um, but it is, um, for instance, if you have a developer like Greenpoint, for instance, they, on their projects, they usually have a certain set of specific standards, and those standards have been captured in a standards commercial system of specifications. So one would um, incorporate that standard specifications in your tender document. So it's just a, a specific, a commercial specific specification. Or another example would be, for instance, uh, a specification on paintwork. Um, Dulux have their own application specifications, how it should be applied, the moisture content of the walls should be um, a certain percentage. And um, so that specification is then incorporated in your um, tender document. Then the conclusion is failure to produce quality and comprehensive specifications may result in uh, claims for extra, uh, extras being submitted by the contractor, leading to queries by clients who look at quantity surveyors for explanation. Okay, so not necessarily um, quantity surveyors, but also um, uh, the architect or the professional team basically why was this item not described very very well uh, for instance so it's always good to be um, on top of what a good description uh, would be or oh, and specific okay and then um, that's more or less everything on specifications it's a short uh, lecture it's basically all, uh, from page 27 until page 31 of your green book so not a lot of work but quite a bit of detail contained in it so please be um, be aware that you go through all of those items something which i didn't highlight which you should go through for me please is the model preambles um, and the sabs uh, standards which um, you should be familiar with already um, but that is basically um, your specifications uh, that is most important in the standard specifications that's always included in any project. Okay, thanks guys. We'll talk again.